Welcome. In this video, we will consider multiband delay's basic features and capabilities, then explore some more advanced techniques. Multiband delay splits incoming sounds into 16 frequency bands and delays, levels and pans them individually. You can see each band has a bar graph attached to it. In delay mode, this represents the delay time from 0 to 100 milliseconds. Notice how it plays the highest frequencies first, then you hear lower and lower bands coming in. This is what it sounds like when the band delays are so long, you can hear the bands as individual signals. You can edit individual bands with one of the three tools here. Individually, as lines, or smooth curves. However, the scale parameter can multiply all band delays by a factor from minus one to plus one. In the middle, delays are multiplied by zero, meaning no delay. The reason this doesn't sound exactly like the input signal is that the band splits introduce a slight phase shift. You can exaggerate this effect by changing the band type to steep here. Let me turn the mix to 50% so it's obvious we aren't getting the same thing. Or you can eliminate phase shift entirely by choosing linear phase. These modes have quite a strong effect on the character of the sound, so experiment with what sounds best for your needs. Each delay has a feedback path, with a global amount of feedback accessible here. Click the waiting button to introduce a tilt in the amount of feedback per frequency. Higher frequencies will have more feedback with this option on, as they decay quicker naturally. This is very noticeable with short delay times and very high feedback values. Indeed, short delays and high feedback values is where multiband delay can really shine as a sound design tool. To keep the feedback from overpowering your mix at high values, there are three feedback limiting options to choose from here. Compression, which uses a limiter style compressor to keep the feedback signal under zero decibels. Saturation, which will soft clip the feedback before it reaches zero decibels. And clipping, which will hard clip the feedback at zero decibels. Additionally, you can high pass the feedback signal to remove some energy from the low end, brightening the overall feedback sound. The harmonic scale button, represented via note icon, allows tuning the band delays to equal temperament pitch offsets instead of discrete millisecond values. Delay time with feedback can be thought of as a pitch for each band. In this mode, the scale parameter decides a main pitch, 50% being equivalent to a C5 note on the piano roll. When moving the scale parameter in this mode, you will see it snaps to full semitone steps. So will the band delay parameters. This can be exploited to create fully fledged resonator sounds and even basic car plus strong physical modeling as we will show later. And now for the main player, the morph knob. As used in EQO, there are eight banks that can hold different settings for delay, volume and panning. The morph knob allows smooth interpolation between these settings and is automatable. If the pitch 
shifting when your morphing is bothering you, click Keep Pitch to stop it from happening. Every time you've reached a new bank of settings, one of these little lines around the morph knob will light up or turn off to let you know you are now morphing between a new pair of banks. As we mentioned earlier, multiband delay can be used as a resonator bank. With the help of an envelope controller, I have key tracked the scale parameter so now the notes I play on the envelope controller correspond to the bass pitch the scale parameter is tuned to. Long story short, doing this can turn this into this. This type of synthesis using white noise and resonators is often used in physical modeling and is commonly referred to as car plus strong. It's one of the principles behind Sakura, for example. Also, don't worry, you won't have to do this tracking yourself. We'll provide the envelope controller patch in the video info and pinned comment along with the demo projects. If you make electronic music of any kind, you have probably been introduced to the concept of phase dispersion somehow. Maybe a third-party plugin turned you onto it, maybe you just happened to listen to any Psytrance song ever. Essentially, it is an effect created by delaying the low frequencies in relation to the high frequencies with the use of all-pass filters. We have two examples in Patcha, both are based on Love Filter. All pass is moderate and Disperser is extreme phase dispersion. When you're using the 0.1 multiplier for the scale knob and have the band set to steep and a delay curve like this, you can get pretty close to that sound. However, what has not been possible before the release of multiband delay is doing this in reverse without recording and then reversing the audio. Simply move the scale knob in the opposite direction to achieve reverse dispersion. Stack multiple instances to intensify the effect. Multiband delay makes a great addition to the toolbox of effects that support the design of impacts, risers and certain types of ambience. With high feedback combined with a short impulse from a percussive sound like this one, you can automate its parameters to receive a completely unique impact sound that isn't like any other in your sample library. And with that, you know all you need to know to go explore multiband delay for yourself. We hope this video made the capabilities of this powerful tool a little more accessible. Don't forget to check out the presets here and video information below for additional helpful links and the demo projects we made for this video. Happy music making!